chaos of Syria's civil war, a new force has risen, one that defies conventional warfare and challenges the balance of power. Once a fractured group of desperate insurgents, the Sham Liberation Organization now wields a weapon that has reshaped the battlefield the drone. These drones are not products of state, sponsored factories or billion dollar defense contracts. They are built in garages and basements by engineers who learned their craft not in universities but on YouTube. This is warfare in the digital age, where innovation replaces resources and defines Trump's firepower. And the results? Devastating. Russian-made tanks, symbols of government dominance, reduced to rubble by homemade precision. Military bases, once considered impenetrable, are now exposed to the relentless eyes of unmanned machines. The Assad regime, long accustomed to crushing dissent with overwhelming force, now finds itself outmaneuvered by adversaries who were once dismissed as mere insurgents. How did we get here? The answer is both alarming and inevitable. Our on the ever-evolving battlefields of Ukraine and Russia, drones have redefined the rules of engagement. From high-tech Turkish TB2s to the humble yet deadly FPV drones, these unmanned warriors are rewriting the manual of modern warfare. But have we reached a point where drones dictate victory? Or are they merely pawns in a game of escalating futility? Picture this, a DAR 500 first-person view FPV drone destroying a multi-million dollar Russian tank. A David versus Goliath story, but with explosives. Is this the future of warfare, where quantity overtakes quality and technology outpaces tradition? Both sides are locked in an arms race of innovation, saturating social media with videos of drones obliterating soldiers, vehicles, and morale alike. But beneath the viral triumphs lies a darker truth. These drones are turning every soldier into a target with no place to hide. A war requires at least two different types of drones, an operator responsible for battlefield surveillance, finding targets, and transmitting visual images to the rear. The other type is suicide drones that carry explosives, bombs, and grenades for attack. Of course, in order to save costs, there are also varieties that have both. We will introduce them step by step next. The Scan Eagle, a marvel of American engineering, or a menace cloaked in technology. This small but sophisticated unmanned aerial vehicle, developed by Boeing and In-Situ, promises surveillance, intelligence, and tactical support. With a wingspan of 3.1 meters and the ability to stay airborne for over 15 hours, the Scan Eagle sees all, hears all, and tells only its masters. Equipped with cutting, edge imaging technology, it streams high quality visuals in real time. Deployed from ships, trucks, and even mobile units, the Scan Eagle doesn't just monitor, it lurks in the shadows, blurring the lines between security and intrusion. And then, there's Iran's revelation reverse engineered Scan Eagles, allegedly captured from US missions. Tehran claims it has mass, produced its own fleet weaponizing a design intended for surveillance. Washington dismisses this as insignificant, but the geopolitical implications are chilling. The Scan Eagle may be small, but its implications are colossal. By Fi Shade Aviation Industries, the Shade 131 is a suicide drone that has garnered global notoriety for its role in asymmetric warfare, with a 15-kilogram warhead and a range of up to 900 kilometers. This loitering munition is designed to deliver precision strikes while spreading psychological terror. Unlike its larger counterpart, the Shade 136, the 131 is distinguishable by its single direction vertical stabilizers and its Surat 1 Wankel engine, a copy of Chinese technology. But its technological simplicity believes its deadly purpose. Its flight control system integrates GPS navigation, 
inertial backup systems, and even potential satellite connectivity, allowing mid-flight course corrections. Critics argue that the Shade 131 epitomizes a grim shift in warfare, low-cost mass-produced suicide drones designed for attritional attacks. shadow of advancing drone technology, Ukraine's Maze Matrix UAV has introduced a chilling new weapon, the Demon. A compact quapcopter with an unassuming design, it has been engineered for devastation. Far from a toy, this drone transforms into a flying kamikaze, delivering death from above with ruthless precision. Equipped with a grenade launcher or up to 7 kilograms of explosives, the Demon Drone can strike targets 12 miles away, need greater range, reduce its payload, and this airborne killer extends its reach to 56 miles, capable of flying deep into enemy territory. Military bases, armored vehicles, anti-aircraft systems, nothing is beyond its grasp. When outfitted with RPG grenade launchers, the Demon is no longer just a drone, it becomes a guided missile. Carrying up to 5 kilograms of explosive payload, it can hit targets up to 10 kilometers away, striking at the heart of fortified positions or key infrastructure. The Demon represents a dangerous precedent, lowering the cost and accessibility of warfare. Its developers call it a revolutionary tactical tool. This is a paradigm shift. Next War has mastered the art of asymmetric warfare. The drones are not just tools of destruction. They are symbols of a new kind of resistance. It rise poses uncomfortable questions. Is this the future of warfare? Can the powerful remain powerful when technology levels the field? And most importantly, what happens when those once oppressed gain the upper hand? Serious scays have become the stage for a battle that may redefine modern war. The ripple effects are undeniable. Taiwan is already studying Ukraine's drone strategy, preparing for a potential conflict with China. Will drones be the decisive factor in a battle for the Pacific, or will they become just another expendable tool in the arsenal of superpowers? As nations ramp up production of suicide drones, FPVs, and AI-powered war machines, the ethical and strategic questions grow louder. Are we creating the perfect soldier or the perfect storm?